When I was 23 years old, I joined my first job. In order to integrate into the team as soon as possible, I would actively participate in the activities organized by the company, including some outdoor activities. Once, the company organized a trip to an outdoor club. This club provided many outdoor facilities, and their camping equipment was well-equipped. You could go boating or fishing here, and we could spend a weekend or an afternoon in the natural environment near the club. In this club, they also offered a rafting day trip. My colleagues were excited to sign up for this activity. Although I didn't know how to swim, I didn't want to miss this opportunity, so I bought a ticket as well. We left very early in the morning and arrived at a wide river, where I saw a lot of people playing in the water. I was a little nervous at first, but my colleagues told me not to worry. When we started rafting, I felt very excited and nervous. At first, the river was calm, and we moved forward smoothly. I started to enjoy the sport slowly. It was June when we went, and the water was much more turbulent than usual because the snow was melting in the mountains. I felt that paddling seemed easy and not as dangerous as I thought it would be. At noon, we were ready to have lunch on the shore. When we reached the shore, we found a perfect place for a picnic lunch. We enjoyed our meal while enjoying the scenery. We could hear the sound of the water flowing and the birds chirping around us, which made my mood very happy. Our guide reminded us that we would be entering a more challenging section next. After a short break, we reboarded the boat and started a more thrilling journey. Our guide led us into another river. This river was located between two canyons and had a much faster current with some large rocks scattered throughout the river. The guide explained to us some tips and precautions. I was at the end of the line, and I was very nervous to face such a challenge. I couldn't control my kayak, even though the guide had told us in detail how to deal with unexpected situations. Soon, my kayak hit a boulder, and I was thrown out of the cabin. I rolled out of the kayak into the cold water. Even though I was wearing a life jacket, the current managed to drown me. The shock of the cold water took my breath away, and I began to lose my bearings. I could see the sky above the water, but I couldn't reach the surface. The current was dragging me down, and I felt like I was going to die in this cold water. I tried to swim to the surface, but the current was too strong. I felt my breath getting shorter, and my body gradually losing strength. I could feel my body gradually losing control, and my arms and legs began to become numb. Eventually, I stopped struggling. I closed my eyes, and my body gradually sank into the water. In that moment, I felt very desperate and helpless. When I realized that my life was about to end, I silently prayed to God. I hoped that God would help me so that I could return to shore alive. My eyes slowly turned black. Suddenly, my pain disappeared, and I felt my body became very light. The surroundings began to turn white, and I felt like I was walking through a tunnel. I realized that I was in a supernatural experience. I felt myself surrounded by a warmth that felt very pure and beautiful. From here, I could see the upper half of my body. When I looked down, I couldn't see my legs. A tail-like object was attached to the upper half of my body. The tail was emitting a warm, bright white light. I was very surprised by this strange sight. It could be a supernatural experience. I had crossed the border between life and death and entered an unknown realm. A room appeared in front of me, which seemed to be made of clouds. I slowly approached this room. I felt like I could walk right through it. As I entered the room, the clouds in the room wrapped around me, seeming to have a warmth surrounding me. There was no furniture or decoration in the room, only a soft light shining down from the ceiling. In this room, I felt surrounded by love. Suddenly, three figures appeared in front of me. They emitted an intense light and looked like they were made of crystal. A ray of light shone on them, creating a beautiful rainbow. One of them was much taller than the other two, and this sense of oppression made me a little nervous. It was as if they sensed my emotions. Instantly, the three figures turned into a group of beautiful angels. They had huge wings and their bodies gave off a divine aura. One of the angels said to me, You have come too early. It is not time for you to leave the earth. 
You need to go back and complete your mission and finish your work there. I didn't know what to say to him. Did they know me? Why do they want me to go back? I had so many questions I wanted to ask them. This angel seemed to read my mind. He put his hand on my shoulder and said again, You must go back. Your mission is not yet finished. You still have a lot to learn. The angel told me that he would provide me with some help in order for me to better accomplish my mission. Then the angel handed me a thick book. When I opened the book, I found that there were no words inside. Suddenly, I saw scenes of my past life in the book. It was like I was watching a silent movie. I saw many scenes, some of which made me feel proud, and some of which made me feel remorseful. But there was one incident in particular that struck me. It was a normal day, and I was walking down the street when a man suddenly bumped into me. I was very angry inside since I had other things going on at the time. I left in a hurry. The angel showed me the truth of the matter. The man was a blind man. It was because he couldn't see the road that he bumped into me. I didn't realize my mistake at that time, so I kept complaining about the man. But now, when I saw the scene, I realized what I did at that time was very wrong. I felt very guilty, but the angel told me that the fault was behind me. I should move on and make up for my mistake with my actions. I realized that there were things that I did not mean to do, but that could have caused harm to others. I also saw some people I didn't know, including a woman and two very cute children. I couldn't see their faces, but I could feel that this woman was very important to me. The angel told me I had to live for that woman and children. I knew I had to go back, but before I left, I asked the angel if he could show me around. When I got an affirmative answer, I was overwhelmed. The angel took me to a very open place. Suddenly, I heard beautiful music, which seemed to come from every object. This place was very relaxing. The flowers and plants here were fragrant, and all kinds of small animals were walking through the grass. The angel took me to a higher place, and I saw a huge waterfall. Then we came to a field of gold. At the end of the field, there was a huge tree. The leaves on the tree were golden yellow. The breeze blew, and the leaves fell from the branches of the tree. Then the leaves turned into birds of various colors. Next to this tree was a clear lake. When I got close to the lake, I noticed a special sheen on the surface of the water. It was as if the lake was dotted with countless diamonds. I bent down and reached out to touch the surface of the water and felt it soft and warm to the touch. Suddenly, I saw some strange things swimming under the surface of the water. Their shapes and colors were very peculiar. Curious, I moved a little closer. As I moved, the creatures moved with me, as if they were interacting with me. When I wanted to come a little closer, the angel stopped me and said to me, You cannot cross this barrier. It's time for you to go back. You have a lot of work to do. My emotions started to get a little lost. The angel said to me, When the time comes, we will come and get you. The angel took me back to earth. Some kind of power suddenly came out of my body, which made me regain a lot of strength. I swam as hard as I could toward the nearest shore. My hand grabbed a big rock, and finally I climbed to the shore without any problem. My body was trembling with pain, and I felt my stomach was very uncomfortable. I bent down and spit out a lot of water from my mouth. Only when there was nothing in my stomach did I gradually stop. My body became very weak, and I could only lie on the ground. After a while, I heard the voices of my colleagues. They lifted me up and assisted me to walk back. When I got back to the camp, my colleagues asked me if I needed to be taken to the hospital. I shook my head and said to my colleagues, I just want to rest now. They looked very worried and brought me a glass of warm water. When I went through that near-death experience, my life was rekindled. I felt my heart was deeply touched. That sense of fear of being tightly surrounded by death made me re-examine my life. I thanked the angels for guiding and rescuing me. Every breath I took made me feel the preciousness of life. In the conversation with the angel, I understood a lot of the true meaning of life. He helped me to realize my shortcomings and mistakes. I experienced such deep feelings that made me understand the true meaning of life. I learned to cherish every moment more, 
to live more seriously, and to appreciate the importance of love and compassion more. This near-death experience not only made me understand my mission, but also made me cherish every moment of my life more. Although 10 years have passed since this incident, it has had a tremendous impact on my life. I deeply understand the preciousness and difficulty of life, so I cherish the life I have now even more. I have met people who love me, and we have twin sons who are the light of my life. They make me feel the value and mission of my existence. I am grateful to God for giving me a second chance.